Happy Palm Sunday. We have got to start. How do we battle? How do we fight? How do we win? What are some of the keys? As we, as we celebrate this day, and you can be opening in your Bibles to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 21, and we're going to read the, the, the familiar passage of the triumphal entry, and we're going to look at a few little pieces of it this morning. But what I want us to take away from this is the power of what is released as we bless. We've been in, this is our third week into the series of the power of blessing. And I'm, I'm going to shift that next week and we're going to talk about the power of the blood. How many of y'all know next week something special? Well, that's Resurrection Sunday. And we'll, we'll start that. The power of blessing. How many of y'all know that you were created to be blessed? Everybody say amen. You were created to be blessed. It's what God told Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 and in verse 2. He said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you and make of you a great nation. And then he said, and you will be a blessing. You will be a blessing. And so, you were made to be blessed. You are made to be a blessing or a blesser. And so it's not just about receiving the blessing. Thank you, God. It's not just about blessing one another. But it's what we said earlier. It's about learning the power that is released. Learning what God does and understanding what happens in the unseen. How many of y'all know we have a spiritual world as well as we have a natural world? What happens, what happens in the spiritual realm whenever we begin to bless God? What hap- Anybody here believe in angels? Hmm? Anybody here believe in demons? Anybody here believe anything? I'm just checking, just checking. All right, I'll just say, hey, work with me a little bit. It'll be easier on all of us. The guy that wrote the majority of the Psalms, the songbook of the Hebrews, the songbook of Israel, David. How many of y'all remember in the early days, David the psalmist? Would, when, when the evil spirits that were tormenting King Saul would come upon him. How many of y'all remember in Scripture the story about and David would begin to play and to sing and, and what happened to the evil spirits? They left. They departed. Something that was going... Now listen. Something that David did in the natural had the ripple effect of some things going on in the spiritual. Now that's not just an Old Testament principle, and we can see it time and time and time again. How many of y'all remember the, the host of Moab and Ammon and Sierra and all of them had gathered against Judah? This is in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Read that story uh, sometime this week. And King Jehoshaphat says, he said, I, I, he, he's making prayer to God. He said, God, you see this multitude of people that have come against us to destroy us. And we have no strength again them. We are helpless, and, and I'm paraphrasing, basically, unless you help us. And he said this right here. We, here here's, he said, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Woo! We don't know. Where are you looking today? See, I know that you're coming here and that you've been going through stuff, or you're going through stuff, or you're about to start going through stuff. You're either in it, Coming out of it or getting ready to go in it. I mean, I know that's just the way life happens. How are you going to battle? You're going to try to fight in your own strength? And so God spoke through the prophet unto the king, and he said, Jehoshaphat, go and appoint singers to go before the army. Appoint singers to go before the army. I've often wondered, being a preacher, if maybe the reason we don't put the singers out in front is so that whenever the enemy shoots all their arrows up, then the preacher can come in. I'm just wondering on that deal right there. That's the only reason. Just That's probably not rightly dividing the word of truth, is it, on that one right there. I, Marsha and I are always going back and forth with one another on that. She always wins. But why would, why would God... Now listen. Why would God... There's an army that's gathered to absolutely decimate and destroy God's people. Why would God, why would God not send a, a huge standing army 
We've got reinforcements. We've got backup. We've got friends. We've got allies. How many of y'all know we start pulling out all the punches when we're battling in our own strength? God said, don't do that. He said, you put the singers out front. Because this day, you won't even need to fight in this battle. The Lord will fight for you. You need to know that as you begin to sing and praise, and here's what the Scripture says, again, paraphrasing, I'm going to set ambushments. How many of y'all like the thought of your enemy getting ambushed? Woo, come get me. I'm just going to be hanging out here praising the Lord. But what's happening in the spiritual realms, I think that angels are being dispatched. I think that there's things that's going on that God is setting us up for a major move of His Spirit in our life. What happens when we begin to praise God? Psalm 22 and 3 says that God inhabits. Everybody say, God inhabits. God inhabits the praises. Literally, God in the Hebrew, that literally means where God inhabits. God sits down and occupies the place. That's the way. It, God sits down and occupies the place where we begin to praise. That's good. The valley, the valley of blessing. In the, back to that story, and I'm just kind of going to bring these together. In Second Chronicles, the valley where the children of Israel went down and all of their enemies had gathered together, when they got to that valley, all of the enemies had turned on one another and destroyed one another. It took them three days to gather up all of the spoil. It's called the Valley of Bacah. Bacah means, it means blessing, to bless. Have you ever seen God turn something around? I'm going into this valley. This looks like a dark place. My enemy is waiting on me down there. Only to see God turn it around and take what originally looked like a place of death and turn it into a valley of blessing. Anybody say amen? That's who your God is. Listen, fight like you have the high ground because you do have the high ground. You have the Most High who lives in you. Battle like you have the high ground because you do. The valley of blessing. The valley of blessing. Woo. He inhabits the praises of His people. That, that word burqah has several significant meanings. The valley of blessing. Blessing is, the, is the, the over or the umbrella meaning of it. As I studied the word deeper, Fern, it literally means a pool of the presence of God with prosperity. A pool of the presence of God with prosperity. And it took them three days to gather up all the treasure. Anybody thank God for a valley of blessing? Amen. If you're in a valley today, no God can turn. Only God can do that. I can't do it. I can't fix that. But your God your dad, who loves you, who created you to receive blessing, who created you to be a blessing, what happens when you begin to bless Him? The singers went forward. If you're in a trial, if you're in a hard spot, if you're in an uphill climb, if you're in the valley, let me tell you how you fight. If you want to fight to win, learn how to bless when your eyes are full of tears. Learn how to praise when your heart's full of sorrow. Learn how, because your God didn't change. How many of y'all know He's still on the throne? Amen? Matthew 21, verse 1, And when they drew near to Jerusalem, when they drew near, what had happened right before this? Well, let me tell you, Jesus was just going about being Him Jesus' self. Huh? He can't help it. He's really good at being who He is. In chapter, in chapter 20, I made a couple of notations right here. First of all, Jesus foretells His death. How many of y'all know He's already seen the end from the beginning? He knows what's coming. He foretells His death. This is in chapter 20. He teaches His followers, His disciples, about servant leadership. He teaches this concept. He that's going to be greatest among you will be the servant of all. You're not going to be like everybody else. You know, when you, when you climb to the highest ranks here, and everybody below you is there to support and hold you up. Jesus said, that's not the way it is in my kingdom. And here's the king. And he's about to go in and present himself to Israel. Now, as he drew near, this is special. You've got to understand this part right here. What happened before the Passover lamb was killed and the blood of that spotless lamb in the traditional Jewish 
ceremony of this. The lamb was brought in. Everybody say the lamb. How many of y'all have got kids or grandkids at your house? It don't matter what kind of a little critter you bring in. If it's a baby critter, they love it. Huh? That's the sweetest little Tasmanian devil I ever saw in my life. It's just, oh, it's so cute. Bella always, but in that, yeah, it's so cute. It's a triantula. Yeah, but it's so cute. It's a skunk. Yeah, but it's a, anyway, right? Here's what was happening. Now listen, understand the significance of this from, from Jewish, from Hebrew eyes. When that lamb was brought into the house, the context of that is that lamb was to be looked at. It was to be closely observed for the next week. There was a connection that starts getting made because what we want to first of all make sure is that it is a pure, spotless lamb. But what happens is, is it becomes endeared to the family. And the kids are playing with These kids have got a new puppy, Zeus, and he looks like Zeus. He's got a body this long and feet that big around already. I mean, he is so cute. Do you know the pain that would fill their hearts? They had a little puppy a few weeks ago, months ago, I guess now. His name was Samson. We like strong names, you know. We moved from a biblical failure to a... Greek mythical anyway, so that'd be the kids is doing. I'm not taking credit for that. Maybe this one will be a little stronger. Chase and Grayson was getting ready to get on the school bus. And little Samson run out in the traffic. Yeah. Endeared to the hearts. How many all know there was only one Lamb of God? There was only one. And so as he come riding in this lamb, the parallel meaning, for thousands of years, they knew what it mean to, means to look at the lamb. But they're crying out, blessed is he. And it's, a, it's an audience of one. And for a week, Fern, he showed himself to be spotless and pure and righteous and holy and good in front of the entire nation. All of the Jewish nation had gathered for Passover. And they saw their lamb. He drew near. Everybody look at that right there. And when they drew near, this is talking about Jesus and his disciples. Everybody say, he drew near. He said, let's go on to verse 2, and we're going to read through this pretty quickly, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass tied to a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. If any man say aught unto you, you shall say the Lord hath need of them. Straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, this is Zechariah, you can read this in Zechariah 9.9. Tell you the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king comes unto you, meek and sitting upon an ass and a colt, the foal of an ass. The disciples went, did as Jesus commanded them, brought the ass and the colt, put on them their clothes. Verse 7, and they set him their own. They, they took their garments off. They took their covering off. And they laid that upon this colt. First of all, how many of all know it's a miracle that a colt that's never been set on Especially a donkey colt. Huh? That should have been a rodeo. But even a dumb animal understood service and obedience to the king. And these men who were following him the closest, who knew him the best, they uncovered themselves, at least their outer garments. How many of y'all come in here today? And I don't need to show a hand. How many come in here today? Those that are watching come in here and maybe you, you've hidden some things, covered some things up. I mean, I know we need to lace, we need to lay some things off and put them under Jesus. I mean, I know he can take care of all of our cares. Those things there. I think that there is a, a parallel there. They put him on the colt 
And a very great multitude sped, they, they spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitude that went before, everybody say, they went before. And they that followed, everybody say, and they followed. So he's, he's got people that's... Pre- you talk about a, a riot of righteousness. They poured out into the streets. Absolutely going, I mean, just, wow, spontaneous worship. We, we come here to, to, to sacrifice for Passover, but our eyes, only one time did this happen when the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Lamb of God rode in. It was not a day like every other day had been. We should not treat this day as ordinary. We should not treat this week as ordinary Christians. This is the high week of the Christian calendar. Set your hearts to spend time with God. Uncover your heart before the Lord and let Him look into your heart and into your life. When He was come in, verse 9, the multitudes that went before and followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Everybody say, Blessed is He that comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when He was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? The multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple. Ooh. How many of y'all know there were guards in the temple? There wasn't just people there, but how many of y'all know there were temple guards? They had a security team in place at church. That's not a new concept. Something unique happens right here. Jesus went into the temple of God and He cast out all them that bought and temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of... How come the guards didn't stop Him? <laughs> Would you? I think, I think we underplay the power. I think that this is such a powerful thing. Have you ever just been awestruck by something just saying, Whoa! Woo! I think that huh, it's almost like wow paralysis. This is amazing. Now listen to me. The temple had been created and designed for something much holier than what was going on. There was so much corruption. The place had become so corrupt, it had turned into a money-making machine. And, and, and so people had to come from far away so they would buy their sacrifices. And guess what? They were selling cheap cut rate. Hey, this dove's a really good one. It didn't have that broken wing when it came in, but I think the Lord would have... Listen, God said for the best, right? Have you given God... Listen to me. This is not a point of condemnation. This is a question you need to answer between you and God. Have you given God your best? That's, that, that's between I'm not your judge, not qualified, way beyond me. Have you given God your best? The best lamb. He gave us His. He cleans the temple. Verse 13, And He said unto them, It's written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you've made it a den of thieves. Look what happens in the temple. See, when we got things right... You know, Remember, this is still in the context of a praise service, right? They're still in front and they're still behind. And what happened was, is what would church be like if before you got to church on Sunday, you come in the doors worshiping? That's what's happening here. This started in the streets. They're worshiping when they come in. Here's the, here's the Lamb of God. and they're, Hosanna! Praise you! Lord. Blessed! Blessed! And they get into the temple and praise and worship service is going on. Jesus cleanses the temple. How many of all know Paul taught us that you are, I am the temple today, right? We are our, His temple. You got anything going on in you, in your mind, in your spirit, in your life? Anything corrupt? That's not what God originally intended for you to be. Look over at your neighbor. Nobody judging. Look over at your neighbor and tell them, you're better than that. Huh? You're better than that. That not on your own, that's what Jesus made us into, huh? You're better than that. Live above that. Take the high ground, it's yours. Live up. Live up. Don't live down. Live up to Jesus. How many of y'all know He's above? Hosanna in the what? Lowest? No, Hosanna in the highest. Take your praise up. Take your life up. A little higher. Walk with Him. 
Verse 14. What happens in church when the worship service starts out there and comes in here? I think the blind and the lame come to him in the temple and he healed them. I mean, I all know there should have already been some things put into motion in the realm of the Spirit. When the chief priests and the scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna, where were they crying? In the temple. Hosanna, to God in the highest, blessed is he. Right? What were they? They were ticked off. Religious people, religious leaders never like it when the limelight is turned from them and the spotlight is put on Jesus. Today is a worship service. We're going to worship some more. And it's an audience of one. This is between you and God. Don't be intimidated to lift your hands. I, I can show you in Scripture, if we had time today, I can show you just about every bodily position you can imagine. They've bowed down, they're laying down, they're kneeled down, their hands are up, their heads are down. You run hot laps for all I care. Just worship in spirit and truth, okay? Worship Him. The integrity of your heart. Say, God, bless you. Thank you for the blessings. And how we battle... I think God will open some of the, the good treasure of His house to us in the midst of this. They're praising, they're worshiping. The religious leaders are displeased about it. That ought to be good enough reason just to tick off a bunch of religious folks to praise God, huh? If they, not just to mention that He's worthy. Verse 16, And He said unto them, Hearest thou what these say? Jesus said, Yeah. Yeah, I can hear them. Have you never read... Out of the mouths of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise. And verse 17, and he left them. He came nigh to begin this story. He left them. They rejected him. If we read on about the rest of this, you remember Jesus crying over and lamenting over Jerusalem? Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often I would have gathered you under my wings like a chicken gathers her babies under her wings, but you would not. You rejected me. And the Scripture says this right here. said, you missed your time or your day, your season of visitation. Don't miss what God has for you today. Don't miss what God has for you this week. Don't miss the time. How many of y'all would like to have a visit by God Himself? See, that's what this day is designed to be. That is when Emmanuel, God with us, come to the streets of Jerusalem and said, Here I am. You have access. Come and see me. Read, the, read, read this week and study how much of the Gospels are written. Jesus here for 33 and a half years Three and a half years of ministry. Read how much of that of the Gospels covers the last week. Just the last week. Psalms 103. Worship team, if you want to come back up. And, and I'm going to wind down a little. And all of the praisers. Yeah, I'll get the little ones up in just a minute. I'll get the little ones up in just a minute. I may need to move a little. I don't want to... Yeah. I'll bring the little ones up in a minute. Psalms 103. Psalms 1, yep, whoop, hold up. Going to be a minute. A country minute. <laughs> Psalms 103. Listen, would you read the Word of God with me today? Would you read this with me? Alright, everybody just, and let's, let's speak it out. See, this is an exhortation to do. David, the song leader of Israel, wrote this. He wrote this psalm. Now listen to me. Here's the context of when these words were written. You remember when Saul was trying to kill David and David went on the run? That's when he wrote this. He was on the run from the most powerful leader he knew. He was on the run from their earthly king who's out to get him. He's a marked man. He has a price on his head. You ever feel like you were alone? You were isolated? But even in the midst of this, here's how David thought. Here's how David battled. He wrote these words. Read them with me. Everybody stand to your feet, if you will. Let's read the Word of God, and we're going to finish right here with the Word, and we're going to spend time in worship, and we're going to believe God. How many of y'all know we can believe God for what He says? Amen? And so by the time we get to, to the second verse... 
He says, don't forget his benefits. Now, I want to say this. I want to preface this. By the time we get to the second verse, he says, don't forget his benefits. So as we're blessing God, we're blessing God, and it's going up. How many of y'all know God is looking down, and He's blessing down? Everybody say, it's a two-way street, huh? It's a two-way street. As we're blessing Him, He's just digging that, and He just said, let me bless you. Don't forget His benefits. This is how we battle. What do you have need of? Do you need a healing in your body? Do you need a touch in finances? Do you have someone that's on your heart that needs deliverance, that needs a breakthrough? A breakthrough? Everybody say, forget not all His benefits. Forget not all His benefits. Let's read Psalms 103, verse 1. A Psalm of David. Help me out. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Who forgives all thy iniquities, who heals all thy diseases. He redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executes righteousness and judgment for all who are oppressed. He made known His ways unto Moses, His acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious and slow to anger and plenteous in mercy. Woo! He will not always chide, neither will He keep His anger forever. He hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is His mercy toward them that fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Like as a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them that fear Him. For He knows our frame, He remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is gone. The place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear Him and His righteousness unto His children's children. Can you say amen? amen? To such as keep His covenant, to those that remember His commandments to do them, the Lord hath prepared His throne in the heavens and His kingdom rules over all Bless the Lord, you His angels that excel in strength, that do His commandments, hearkening unto the voice of His word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye His hosts, you ministers of His that do His pleasure. Bless the Lord, all His works, in all places of His dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Give the Lord a hand clap. Let's bless the Lord. Let us worship. All right, kids. All my kids. Come on. These are worshipers, not in training. These are warriors. Grab you a stick with a flag on it. Grab you a palm branch. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Before we're done, Jesus said these words. I asked specifically if I could have the kids up today. You remember when Jesus, the little children came into Jesus. And his disciples came to him and said, These little children, you need to don't let them bother the master. And Jesus said, You let these little kids alone. You let them come to me because of such is the kingdom of heaven. And then it says, And he put his hands on them. Remember what it said? He put his hands on them and he did what? He blessed them. Ever say he blessed them? How many of y'all are not going to buy into this generation that's cursed, that's lost? Not in this house, not in your house, not in this place. Our kids are not going to be lost to this world. We're going to, we're going to raise them up in a church that knows how to bless God, knows how to receive a blessing so we can be a blessing. How many of y'all think we ought to bless our kids huh? after we get done blessing our God? Let's worship Him, church. Worship Him this morning. Worship Him today. Bless you, Jesus. Bless you, Lord. Palm Sunday, a day of worship. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
share with first service this morning. There's a story in the Old Testament. There's a prophet of God and the man that's with him, and uh, they're in trouble. They're surrounded by the enemy. They got caught. And uh, the guy that's with this prophet is freaking out. He's scared to death. He's lost his wits. He's just at odds with himself. But, you know, something amazing happens. He says, we're outnumbered. We're, this is pointless. We're, we're goners. And the prophet says, no, he who's with us much more than those that are against us. And then he prayed, and he said, Lord, open his eyes, let him see. And guess what he saw? Guess what he saw? We're going to sing one more chorus, and it's unfamiliar to you, but it's extremely easy, and it's very powerful. All it says is, this is how I fought my battles. This is how I fought my battles. And then it says, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Yes. I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. 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 This is how I fight my battles.
Okay, now the worship team, Aaron, what I want you guys to do is just do one more that is familiar, that's slow, just worshipful, and we're going to speak blessing. We're going to pray blessing over our children. And so, a couple of things. If you're here, and the valley that you're looking at, or the valley you're in, or the valley you just are sure that's lying before you, looks like a valley where the enemy is prepared to destroy you. I mean, all know God loves you. He didn't love them back there any more than He loves you. And He will turn that valley of death into the valley of Rakah, a valley of blessing. A pool, a deep pool of His presence and prosperity for you. So if you need prayer, we want you to come and we want to pray with you. We want to speak blessing over you. Now here's what I want to do. Hey, Grayson, come up here with Pop. Come here, baby. Fellas, come here with Pop. I want you parents and grandparents to get your babies. See, they brought to Jesus the little children. The disciples. See, they, didn't, they hadn't got it all figured out yet. The, the disciples said, listen, don't, don't bother the master. And Jesus corrected him. He said, no, this is not a bother. You don't run these babies away. Sometimes we forget all of our children downstairs and all of that. And we do our adult thing. What a beautiful, what a beautiful sight for these eyes. To get to worship with our babies. Our grandbabies. So parents and grandparents, won't you just come on up here. Let's spend some time in the altar together. How many of y'all think families that... Huh? Or Christian families ought to pray together, not just at home, but even at church. And so let's just do this thing and worship. And if you need prayer, if you are facing the valley. Now listen, if you're here and you don't have a child here, you feel free to adopt one. You can be Uncle Charlie or Aunt Lulu, whatever needs to be. You adopt one, all right? Come on. Everybody, come on up this way. Come on. Here, there's lots of room up here. Come on. Come on up here. Get on up here on the stage. Come on up here. Bring them on up here. Make room. Make room. Comest thou hitherest forward this way. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. How many of y'all believe our church ought to pray together? We ought to bless together, huh? We're in this thing together. This is how we fight our battles. Nobody fighting alone, huh? Bring your babies up here. And for everyone else, listen, you come up and get involved. But if not, listen, just put your hand up this way. Would you speak blessing as we worship one more time? Would you speak blessing over our babies, over our children? What would Jesus do if He was here? He'd say, you bring them babies up here and let me put my hands on them and bless them. Isn't that what He did back then? He'd still do the same today. And if you want to come up and join us, you come up and join us. Please, for those that are at home or somewhere else, if your babies are close to you, your grandbabies, put your hands on them and bless them. In the name of the Lord. Bless them in the name of the Lord. And if not, for those of you whose kids maybe are grown, they're moved away now, would you, uh, would you just pray for them? How many of y'all know there's no distance in prayer? There's no distance in the Spirit. The Lord in heaven is as near here as He is there. There's no distance. Let's worship and let's pray. Father God, we love You. Thank You, Lord God. 
Thank you, Lord God. Where's Jason at? There he is. Come here, baby. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. I speak blessing over these babies, Lord God. Father God, I speak blessing on Bella. Thank you, Lord God, for your blessing on these children. I speak blessing upon you, Gary. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings upon our babies. Thank you, Lord God, for Chase. I speak blessings upon my son, Lord God, my grandson. We declare these blessings over our children. I declare blessings over their mama and daddy. They're traveling today. I declare blessing over Brad and Mandy. I declare blessing over, over Jeff and Bree and the babies that will be born to that union, Lord God. We declare blessing. Thank you, Lord God, for your blessing. We say bless. Be blessed in the name of the Lord. Blessed in Jesus' name. Blessed, Lord God. We speak blessing in the name of Jesus. We speak blessing over our baby. We speak blessing over Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We speak blessing. We speak blessing. We speak blessing over our baby. Bless. Bless in the name of Jesus. We speak blessing over our children, over our grandchildren. Bless in Jesus' name. We speak blessing. Blessing in Jesus' name. Blessing, open up my eyes and wonder, Lord, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and me. Thank you, Lord God. I speak blessing. You love to speak blessing over our children, over our grandchildren. We speak blessing. We do just what you can do, Jesus. Bless the kids. There is no blessing. Blessing in Jesus' name. Holy God. Blessing in Jesus' name. Bless. Bless. Blessed in Jesus' name. Blessed in Jesus' name. Blessed in Jesus' name. We speak the blessing. We declare the blessing. Blessed. Blessed. Blessed in church keep blessing church blessing we speak blessing in jesus name blessing lord god we speak blessing thank you jesus we speak blessing god bless bless we speak the blessing lord god bless lord god your children blessed in jesus blessed in jesus blessed bless put our hearts and our eyes toward Bob's class. We have some of our little ones down there. Lord God, we speak blessing. We speak blessing upon our families, upon our little ones down in Bob's class. We speak blessing over those that are watching. We'll be watching. We speak blessing. We speak blessing over those who couldn't be here today. We thank you, oh God, that we are blessed people. And that blessing emanates. The source of our blessing is you, Lord Jesus. May our hearts 
be sensitive to your nearness this week as the little lamb was brought into the household and connection was made. May our connection be deeper, more meaningful, more significant than ever before. And on Friday, on that good Friday, may we remember as we hold the cross out here, may we remember as we travel down the road, may we remember what you've done, Lord Jesus. The Lamb of God, our precious Lamb. May we remember, may it touch our heart, Lord God. May our hearts be a little bit wounded, Lord God, and that that wound, Lord God, that that wound would be fresh as we see Your love extended to us. Your blood poured out for us. May we walk in the power of Your blessing, the power of Your love, the power of Your blood. We speak the blood of Jesus Christ over each household. In Jesus' name, and everyone that agreed said, Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. <laughs> blessed, blessed, blessed Palm Sunday. Thank you for being at Westside. Hug somebody's neck. Have like a 60-second blessing blitz on your neighbor.